Welcome to everyone on this bright, sunny day, even though we're near the darkest days of the year. We are here to warm each other with the radiance of the world around and the radiance of our presence together on this special Lessons and Carols Advent service. So welcome to this service. Some upcoming services on Tuesday is our special service of uh, candles and remembrance. It's a lovely, intimate service where we're uh, reflective on uh, those who have gone, uh, gone by uh, and uh, those of us who want to remember loved ones or friends. And uh, so it's a time of grievance, of remembrance, but it's also a winter solstice and celebrating the returning light and what that means for us. So that's Tuesday at 7 p.m. December 24th, our Christmas Eve service, uh, we are in a dilemma about how to proceed with it, whether we should uh, go to a virtual service, uh, holy, or uh, whether to do a, a combination as we have. Uh, we've invited you to uh, sign up uh, if you're interested in this service. Uh, we're leaning towards uh, the virtual, but uh, also, it would be lovely to have some folks here, and we won't turn anybody away that wants to come and participate at that service. Uh, December 26th, we are uh, going to put that service on pause, uh, typically, or we've started a new tradition in the past of gathering downstairs for coffee and donuts and muffins and all kinds of good things as we celebrated the season, but with our current realities gathering in that kind of way doesn't make sense. So we're inviting you to uh, go online to our YouTube channel and to uh, participate through some of the services that we've already had in Advent. They have been lots of good musical feasts as we have come through this season. Uh, January the 2nd, Reverend Bruce Sweet from Barry will be leading in the worship on that Sunday. Eric? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good morning, everyone, and Merry Christmas to you all. We look forward to the service this morning, and I bring a bit of joy myself because I'm reporting on the ramp it up uh, for the new ramp that we're going to have built. Uh, Two years ago, it was a bit of a dream that we thought we could get a drawing and we'd get a new ramp. And then when we saw the price tag, we thought it over and thought we needed a new roof and we needed other repairs. But fortunately, we have some very hardworking grant writers in our congregation. And uh, we were um, awarded a $54,000 grant. Uh, then we received another $5,000 grant thousand dollars from um, a fundraising dinner here at the church and to date we have sixteen thousand dollars that has been donated by you the congregation to add to that to bring us to a total of about seventy six thousand uh, dollars before we even chip away the old ramp and get started so we're we're really um, delighted uh, to see that we're moving along in this way. You still have until the end of uh, December to make a donation, if you would like, for a receipt for this year. Along with this um, project, because it's kind of outside any other committee, there is a new committee being stuck, uh, struck um, uh, on the Ramp It Up uh, project. And so it's going to be a finance, construction, fundraising group uh, that will be struck in the new year. And if you're interested in participating in that in any way, uh, you could either be in touch with Mary Phelps, the Chair of Leadership, or myself, or Don Atkinson. Um, uh, Chair of Finance, uh, we're all very excited about this project, especially because we're in such good shape. So thank you very much, and we hope to hear from you.
morning. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome our guest musicians uh, here with us this morning, and you've already been hearing from them in the prelude music. I'm, I'm so pleased to have the Yuletide Brass Quartet with us this morning, and so we welcome uh, tuba player Trevor Fairchild on the trombone, Jessica Herons on the trumpet, Robin Watson, and uh, also on the trumpet and the person who brought this group together, I think just in the last month or less, Randy Hoover. So it's just wonderful to have them with us to make this an especially festive service this morning. So welcome to the Utah Brass, and thank you. And while we're saying thanks, we, uh, Don Atkinson has resurrected this uh, leather lectern for us. So thank you, Don, for your hard work in putting this together. It again adds wonderfully to the liturgical furniture as part of our sanctuary. So this is a partial list of the life and ministry of St. Paul's. We appreciate all that you do, and we come now together in worship. We respectfully acknowledge the southern watershed of Manadowitz-Ogayagin, Spirit Lake, Georgian Bay, and Weyese-Ogening, Shining Lake, Simcoe, and centrally, Lake Kuchiching waters and land that have historically sustained the lives of Wendat and Anishinaabe, Anishinaabe, including the Ojibwe, Odawa, and Potawatomi nations, collectively known as the Three Fires Confederacy of the Anishinaabe, and centrally, Rama First Nation, the keepers of the Majinkening fishing weirs. These sacred lands and waterways are recognized in the Robinson-Huron Treaty, Williams Treaties, and Jay Collins Land Purchase. Recognizing all nations gathered and living here today from across Turtle Island, including the Haudenosaunee, Métis, and Inuit peoples. Oh, 
Group, this Advent season, we have been traveling through the darkness of these times, both literally and metaphorically. We've explored what it means to live in the shadows. But out of the shadows, there is always the light that is before us. Advent, before the light. And so we light this Christ candle as symbol of light for us, for the world, for all that we do and seek. And we light this candle of solidarity as an expression of the light that we extend into the world. And also this candle of solidarity with the artists who are working on the Call 83 project, inviting the spirit of reconciliation. So in this special service, as we listen to the story of the birth narrative, as we Hear it again as we have for all of our lives. May we open ourselves to its meaning for us in this time and this age and what the light of this birth narrative means to us these days. Let us open ourselves in worship. So we come to lighting our fourth candle. As we journey through this Advent season, we do so in the darkness of these days. As the light dwindles, we acknowledge what it means to live in dark times, to be conscious of the fears, challenges, and uncertainties of these times. We gather together to face the darkness. On this fourth Sunday in Advent, we light the candle for love. In our complex world with its many challenges, our ethical struggles to discern good from bad, and the range of thoughts and emotions along any spectrum, we recognize that in this mix there is always the divine calling to the spirit of hope, peace, joy, and love. We rise to the calling of hope, peace, joy, and love. As the Apostle Paul counseled the small Christian community of Corinth, the greatest of these is love. Love is a sentiment, a feeling, a sense that goes beyond all understanding. It is at the heart of creation the wondrous evolution of this planetary home that includes us as one species amongst many. So we light this candle to be embraced by love and to share this love with all.
It is right that we acknowledge the generosity of each one of you, our generosity of spirit, our generosity of service, our generosity of monies that contribute to the well-being of this community and our work in the world. May this generosity extend from us into the all of creation, offering blessing and appreciation and the gift of hope and responsibility that we may all appreciate in God's goodness.
Let us come together in a time of sharing of prayer. In this season of dwindling light, as the darkness surrounds us, we seek your light as it burns bright in this community, as it is represented in the candles of hope, the candles of Advent that call us to the deep emotions of how we respond to the shadow world around. So we pray for those who are experiencing life in the shadows, whether because of the challenging of these dark days, whether mental illness challenges, whether physical challenges, whether economic or social challenges, these are shadows that are real to people's lives. And so we acknowledge them as part of living. We acknowledge them as having the need for us to respond, to be light into this shadowy world. And so we pray that we might be light to the corners of the world that experience hardship these days, for those who live under the threat of violence, for those who live under the threat of lack of food and water, those facing climate realities that are changing the world around and threatening well-being for so many. We recognize these shadows in the world around us in our immediate community and in our own community as some of us face the challenge of illness and these challenging days. To all of this as a community of faith we hold each other and we are light to one another. In our simple phone calls, in our gestures of appreciation, in the simple things we do, we bring the light of Christ's love to each other and to the world. So we invite that light into our own life as we come to the end of this cycle of darkness May we revel in what it means to be light for ourselves and for the world. In this we ask for your love. Amen.
Let me say that I appreciate the virtual choir. We all, I'm sure, certainly miss having our real choir here in our midst, and so we appreciate you coming together and uh, presenting the virtual anthem for us. Uh, we look forward to the day when we can all gather again in this place. So we begin in these lessons to read the prophecies from Isaiah. We have been dwelling during Advent on this first prophecy of Isaiah 9 about those who dwell in darkness will see a great light. And these are the words of Isaiah that predict in the future a child will be born, a child who will be the comforter, a prince of peace. And so it's out of these predictions that our story emerges and the narrative of Jesus comes to fulfill these words from Isaiah. So listen then to this prophecy. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them has the light shined. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his root. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the, after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth and shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breadth of his lips shall he slack, slay the wicked. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them all.
And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered her and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thou cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her.
And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was made first when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same shepherd, sorry, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men.
And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go down even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all that had heard it wondered at these things which were told them by the shepherds. Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, as it was told unto them.
Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen a star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of, them, demanded of them where the Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor, and he that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily, caught, privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star should appear. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child, and when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them until it stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way.
And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou my, thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast preparest before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of the people Israel. Let us again at least stand to appreciate Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Thank uh -huh.
We have been surrounded by one of the greatest stories ever told, the story of God with us, God Emmanuel, the story of God come to us in the vulnerable birth of a baby. So we give thanks for Creator's blessing to each and every one of us. We give thanks that Jesus' life is a testament to how we respond to the challenges of life. May we walk with friend Jesus. And may this day, may we be surrounded by the spirit of love that holds and encourages and lifts each one of us up. Go now in peace. Amen.